Hey, what's going on everyone? Matthew from TheRightTrader.com back today with another daily crypto update. Today we're going to go over our normal schedule in a more detailed technical analysis on TradingView in just a second. And a lot has gone on in the crypto space since my last daily crypto update. We actually saw cryptocurrencies take a pretty massive hit. And what's interesting is we actually uh, just over the past few hours started bouncing off our major support levels. Now, that's very good because, like I said, those were support levels that we definitely did not want to drop below. And actually, some cryptocurrencies took pretty significant hits, right? Ethereum dipped below $500. So it was looking worrisome at a certain point. But, like I said, we did end up experiencing a pretty nice rebound from that. And that leads us to what's next, which is, you know, we're still in our bit of consolidation. But this could be a very interesting opportunity right now in cryptocurrency possibly a good time to get in if you're not already in. Keep in mind, I'm not here to give financial advice. Everything I, I share in these videos are just my personal opinions, but that is something that I will discuss in further detail during the technical analysis. And just to recap what's been going on over the past 24 hours for the general market, like I said, we did end up moving lower, uh, pretty significantly lower for certain cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, but just recently here, we ended up getting a pretty nice bounce across the board, which kind of saved the day, really, in a sense. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for live cryptocurrency market updates. Link to that in the description of this video. And don't forget to check out my premium content where you can find monthly cryptocurrency buying opportunities. I will be releasing new ones soon. Link to that as well in the description of this video. And with that being said, let's get started with a technical analysis with Bitcoin here. We are back above our red downtrend line. We're back above $8,000 as well. That is pretty significant because the end of our symmetrical triangle formation, we're still not out of that, right? Uh, we're still trading in between our two pink trend lines, both our downtrend line and our uptrend line. And the end of that formation is actually at around $8,000. So in my opinion, it's very likely that we do end up going towards the end of this formation at this point. And while the fact that we bounced off this major long-term support level, the uptrend line, is a very good sign. That's really what we wanted to see, right? Because moving below that would have been a disaster and would have truly set an extremely bearish tone for cryptocurrencies in general. Um, we still need to break out towards the upside of the symmetrical triangle formation because at the end of the day, it still is more or less 50-50 in this type of situation where we're either going to break out towards the upside, which is going to be exactly what we want to see, right? That's going to be the bullish signal. Or we could always break towards the, uh, towards the end of that, uh, towards the downside, and that would be, like I said, very bearish. Now, we do have some positive signals as well that are starting to pop up. A little bit of flattening out on the MACD and histogram, but one that is even more significant is that we broke out of our downtrend on the RSI. So... That is a positive signal, also combined with some very nice buying volume. Bitcoin looking pretty interesting here. Like I said, we still have to see it get towards the end of the formation and break towards the upside to truly confirm that cryptos are ready to move higher again. But this is already a very good, you know, first sign, let's say. Now let's go over to Ethereum, which is in a little bit of a different position, a little bit of a worse position, uh, depending on how you look at it. And there's some different things going on with Ethereum. I saw that there was some drama with EOS. The EOS team was actually dumping large amounts of Ethereum. And there's also been some ICO regulatory uh, constraints that seem to be coming into play that are maybe putting a little bit of extra pressure on Ethereum. But either way, we ended up going below $500. You can see that we have a very long uh, lower wick, which means that buyers did buy up those lower levels, and we're now back above that $500 mark, which is very good. We didn't want to start really moving below that, and we ended up bouncing where we had some previous consolidation back here at around $450. So that is also a logical area to bounce off of. And hopefully Ethereum will start to uh, finally put in some consolidation here. The drop should be able to slow down. We did get an extreme amount of selling volume. Hopefully that flushed things out as well. And indicators still downtrending, right? We want to see those start to flatten out. But now that we, we were able to get that last you know, drop in, hopefully we're going to remain above $500. And even if we just consolidate in a pretty flat manner, I think that we should be moving... Uh, towards the downtrend line and that's where we're going to get our indication of either breaking out of that towards the upside or moving lower. Let's go over next on the Litecoin chart and see what Litecoin has been doing. 
So Litecoin is actually in a bit of a sturdier position compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum because it's just it actually broke out of its uh, downtrend here and we do have a short-term downtrend that's still in the making but it, it's just in a better a little bit more bullish position as of right now and we're above $145 again we had temporarily dipped below that on the drop but we're back above it still holding the uptrend line very nicely got to bounce off that indicators we still want to see them flatten out a little bit more some nice buying volume here and we're coming towards the end of our symmetrical triangle formation between our two red trend lines. That should happen within the next week. We're either going to break towards the upside or downside, and that's what's going to set the trend for Litecoin. And will also give us a pretty good indication on what's to happen next with cryptocurrencies. What I like with Litecoin is it's probably one of... It's probably going to be one of the first movers to let us know uh, if cryptocurrencies will either be heading towards the upside or downside. So definitely one to pay attention to here as, you know, getting those first signals in. But we're going to jump over to Nano now. Uh, Nano was not looking good yesterday. We had actually dropped below 100,000 Satoshis, and that was definitely a very bearish signal. Now, like I said, the market ended up experiencing a pretty strong bounce and when Nano uh, moves towards the upside recently, it's been moving very quickly. Now, of course, it's been through its struggles, but like I said, when it has been moving higher, it's done so very successfully, and it actually managed to get a very nice V-shaped bounce, pushing us back above 100,000 Satoshis. That's exactly what we wanted to see happen. And now, hopefully, we will be remaining above that 100K mark, putting in some consolidation uh, for a bit here, I think, until we reach the end of the downtrend line. At that point, once again, it's going to be a matter of either breaking back below 100,000 Satoshis, which would be bearish, or breaking out of the downtrend line. For that, we'll just have to wait and see. We can't make any calls. We have to make, wait for confirmation. Uh, but at least we're back above 100,000 Satoshis, which is already a very good sign, right? And puts much less pressure on the price. Let's go over now to Ripple, see what Ripple has been doing. And let's see if it's been able to get back above its uh, resistance level. So we dropped uh, below 65 cents. We're still not above that yet. We're trying to get uh, back to that level. And let me go ahead and draw in the downtrend line on the RSI because I believe we may have broken out of that right now. It does look like we did break out of the downtrend line on the RSI, so that is, of course, a bullish signal. Still want to see the MACD and the histogram uh, start to turn up a little bit. But the price is in a little bit of a tricky situation right now because there's a lot of resistance at 65 cents. Still have the downtrending Bollinger Bands and middle band. So definitely some things putting pressure on the price. And I should really go ahead and draw in this short-term downtrend line over here. Uh, we should see within the next few days a uh, possible break above our short-term downtrend line. I'll go ahead and put that in red so it's a little bit more clear. Uh, that will be a pretty bullish signal as far as letting us know that in the short term we're likely to go back towards a dollar, maybe 84 cents. And that's what I'm hoping to see really uh, within the next week or so. As for bearish signals, we're going to be looking for a drop below 50 cents. On the dip today, we went as low as 52 cents, so almost tested that 50 cent mark. And that's the level that we really don't want to move below. That would mean that we probably go all the way down to 30 cents if that were to happen. But for now, we're still above that. We're still in the clear um, keep in mind, for a lot of these cryptocurrencies, we're not out of the woods just yet, but at least we're getting some bounces at the last minute where we're supposed to, and hopefully we, we really dodged a bullet and we'll be ready to start climbing back up higher and then breaking out of our consolidation to let us know and get that confirmation that cryptos are ready to start uh, moving back up towards their highs, right? Now, for NEO, we just bounced above our downtrend line. That's a very good sign. Very long lower wick, which tells us that buyers did buy up those price levels and nice buying volume as well. Nice little bounce on the RSI, pushing us back above the 30 line. I'm also going to draw in our short-term uh, downtrend line on the RSI, which we've also successfully broken out of. A little bit of flattening out on the MACD and histogram. I think that as far as the drop is concerned, we went as low as 47 cents. So basically at around $50, I don't see us moving below that unless, you know, the whole cryptocurrency market really takes a massive hit, which, like I said, is always possible, but it's looking like the dropping will slow down and that we're actually going to start to uh, put in the true recovery now. So I don't think we're going to be moving really uh, lower than $50. We could always come back and test that level, I think. For the time being, NEO is probably going to maybe push a little bit higher, basically put in some consolidation uh, while trying to climb back towards, you know, maybe $675, $85. A move above $85 would be our, our 
bullish confirmation here as well as a move out of the downtrend line. So those are the two things to look forward to as far as bullish signals. But really, I'd say a pretty horizontal sideways movement is likely here. So not much dropping, uh, I think, is in the cards over the next week or so. And hopefully we'll be even moving a little bit towards the upside. So that's what I want to see for NEO here. And I definitely think it's completely uh, possible and feasible. Let's go over to Stellar now. Uh, very nice hammer candlestick for Stellar. Long lower wick. Buyers bought up those price levels. Uh, perfect bounce, really. A lot of buying volume. And we got a nice little kick up on the RSI, pushing us back above the 30 line. Still want to get back above our uptrend line there. But for Stellar, I'd say that we're in a little bit of a tricky situation because we're still in this range between 2,000 and 3,000 Satoshis. I'm not convinced that we're going to be popping out of that just yet. What would be bullish at this point would be getting back in our consolidation between 3,000 and 3,500 Satoshis. I think that definitely is a possibility. We'll have to see how quickly we're able to bounce over the next few days. But we could see the price get back into that consolidation, which would be good. If that doesn't happen, I think that we're going to be moving uh, basically in the middle of this range right here until the general crypto market is ready to bounce, at which point Stellar should be able to follow pretty successfully, actually. And let's go over and take a look at Vertcoin. Uh, Vertcoin was going towards its very major support level at $1.54, so let's see how it's acting now. Looks like we have a red candlestick, actually, which is interesting, and no real bounce here for Vertcoin, unfortunately. Uh, downtrend indicators all are all still downtrending. And as for the price action, a little bit of a bounce off the downtrend line, but really uh, no signs that we're ready to move back up just yet. So still a good chance that we test that $1.54 support level for Vertcoin. And I'd say that we're going to act relatively flat here, put in some consolidation while maybe testing $1.54 until we reach the downtrend line and then we'll either break towards the upside or move below $1.54. But I think we're definitely gonna have to reach the end of this little triangle over here before knowing uh, if we're gonna be truly bullish for Vertcoin or not. For now, probably just some consolidation because we didn't see any type of you know bounce or anything like that like we did for other cryptocurrencies. Let's take a look at Lisk now. Uh, Lisk was previously one of the stronger cryptocurrencies out there with Ethereum and NEO. It ended up taking a pretty massive hit over the past couple trading sessions. And we've actually been seeing some interesting patterns here that we that haven't been appearing on other crypto charts, which is the MACD histogram and RSI flattening out, uh, putting in some very nice, you know, very nice hook back towards the upside. And one thing that I have been pointing out is, as you can see, uh, usually for, for technical analysis, the first time we attempt to cross over, there's a pretty high chance that we fail it. And that's what happened back here, right? Where we moved lower again uh, after testing it the first time. It also happened back here as well. So be aware, I'd say, that that is a possibility. But with that being said, we're definitely starting to see uh, the beginning of a potential reversal here on the indicators. And that should obviously correspond to a following reversal in the price. We also broke out of the downtrend line on the RSI. We are holding up above $12.15 with a hammer candlestick here. Very long lower wick. So what I want to see for Lisk is just remaining above $12.15 would be enough right now. Hopefully we'll be able to move a little bit higher towards $15. And I think we're going to put in some consolidation until we reach uh, closer to the end of our red downtrend line. Now what's interesting for Lisk is compared to a lot of other cryptocurrencies, it's, you know, formation, it's consolidation, uh, the end of it at least, is a little bit further than a lot that are out there. So maybe it's going to take more time to get a balance than others. Or since it did get a pretty significant drop, uh, it might actually be able to start moving pretty soon here. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, a move above $17.46 would indicate that we might actually be breaking out of the downtrend a little bit sooner than expected. But for now, expect some consolidation between $12 and 15 cents in our downtrend line right here. Um, once again, pay attention to that $17 and 46 cent level. Let's go ahead and take a look at Cardano now, see what Cardano has been doing. Now Cardano is not looking super bullish here, a little bit of a lower, uh, longer wick, but indicators still acting weak. No real bounce as far as the price is concerned and a little bit of a tricky situation here uh, because we have a lot of resistance with the downtrend line and with that 2000 Satoshi level. 
but we are being supported with the Bollinger Bands that are starting to flatten out. We're not really expanding there, and we actually have a lot of support from the lower Bollinger Band, which is you know holding up the price very nicely right here. So we still have to pay attention and really see if we're going to be able to break out of this downtrend line here. Uh, we could see a rejection and start moving closer to 1,254,000 Satoshis, which is our next big support level. But within the next few days, we should get our first test of the downtrend line, really within the next day or two, and see if we're able to get back above 2,000 Satoshis. That would be very good right now for Cardano. And I feel like there's a pretty fair chance that that, ha that, that does happen. But for now, we can't you know count on it just because we didn't get any kind of green bullish candlestick or anything like that. Let's take a look at IOTA. I took a look before I started this video and it was actually looking pretty decent. So let's see what's going on here for IOTA. It looks like we have a pretty interesting reversal in the price. We've actually been putting in higher highs, higher lows over the past three candlesticks, increasing buying volume with a little bit of an explosion today. And all the indicators hooking back up towards the upside, about to get a positive crossover on the MACD and histogram, which would be very bullish. We also broke out of our downtrend line on the RSI. We're back above the 30 line as well. So those are all very bullish signals and the price is slowly but surely starting to move higher we will of course have a lot of resistance at a dollar and 47 cents uh, because that does correspond to a a pretty strong resistance level as well as our middle band so that's not going to be easy to get back above that i think that we may struggle with that until the rest of the crypto market uh, sees a bit of a stronger bounce but testing that would be a good sign and i don't see us dropping below a dollar and 13 cents right now I think that we're going to put in a little bit of consolidation between $1.13 and $1.47. And hopefully, if the market gets another bounce, uh, IOTA will be able to push above that $1.47 support level, and then we'll start moving back towards $2. With well, that being said, this is the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my premium content and my Twitter. Link to those in the description. I'll see you next time.